Hello friends, my name is Richard Solomon, and today I'd like to simplify the IAG, E-I-A-G process. For those who wish to use this process with their families, friends, associates, teammates, and workmates. Now at the present time, we are living in an age of great discord and division where people are dwelling in their own silos, only talking to themselves and like-minded individuals. Each silo is like an echo chamber where people only talk to like-minded individuals. This cha uh, chamber uh, is reflected in the television programs they watch, the news networks, the newspapers, the articles they read, social media platforms, political parties, and politicians who repeat and reinforce their own preconceived notions of what is both true from their point of view and what is right. Friends, we live in a world of alternate realities. And from my point of view, there seems to be no way of bridging the divide that exists among people in our country and globally. However, I would like to respectfully suggest that you consider using the four-step IAG process within small groups of people like members of your family, uh, your friends, your associates, your teammates, your workmates, all who have different views on a given topic for discussion, such as the protest on the Capitol of the United States on January 6, 2021, or have a discussion with those folks on the validity of the 2021 election. So let me first explain what exactly the IAG is. And I have a handout on that. I hope you can read it. The four steps of the IAG reflection process. Let me stand up and see if you can read this. The first step is the E. What event shall we reflect upon? Step two, identify what you actually saw and did at the time of the event. Step three, analyze what you were thinking and feeling at the time of the event. And step four, the G, having listened and heard what others have said about the event, you then generalize what does this event uh, mean. So let's go over this by using these various steps. Here is step one, the E, what if an event shall we reflect upon. And all you have to do is get a group of people together who, who have differing views, form a circle, invite them to sit down and give each of them a chance to talk about what event they'd like to talk about. Could be the election, 2020, it could be the protest on, uh, January 6th, 2021, that would be the f first step to do. What's the second step? Step number two, here it is, hope you can read it. It says, identify what you actually saw and did at the time of the event. So then as the facilitator, what you would do is invite each of the people one at a time indicate what they saw and what they heard. Not what they think they saw, not what they wanted to see, but actually what did you see and hear during the event that everyone agreed to talk about. And once again, remember, you are inviting people with different views coming together and wanting to discuss this in a methodical and systematic and even scientific way. So what's the third step? Step number three, 
the A, analyze what you were thinking and feeling at the time of the event. So what happens here? As the facilitator, you give each person a chance to first share what he or she was thinking at the time of the event, not seeing, not hearing, but what was in their mind. Not what they think others were thinking or saying, but what were they actually thinking at that time. And then you go around again and you give each person a chance to talk about what he or she was feeling at the time. We differentiate the uh, difference between thinking and feeling. Thinking has to do with thoughts, cognition. Feelings have to do with emotions. And finally, we get to step number four, the G, inviting uh, people to share after they have listened and heard what others have said about the event, they generalize. What does this all mean to me? Now, the purpose of this is to enable people from divergent backgrounds to, to, for the first time to get out of their silos and begin to listen and respect and appreciate the differences so that maybe we as a country and other countries can begin to understand, listen for understanding the different perspectives on what had transpired in a critical national event. Now, if you want a copy of this handout that I showed you, you can get it by simply writing me to my email address, rdsolomonphd at gmail.com. I'll say that again, rdsolomonphd at gmail.com. Or you can take a screenshot of my Facebook page and you can get a copy of the handout. Now, if you wish to share your feedback about the IAC process, both positive and negative, I would appreciate hearing what you have to say about it. You may feel this is worthless, it's impossible, it can never be done. But this is only my small contribution wanting to help repair, help bridge the gap, help enable people to respect each other and talk in a systematic and methodical way about some critical event that has occurred in our country. So we invite you to use this IAG process with your friends, your neighbors, your associates, your workmates, your teammates, Explain to them the process and let it unfold. And obviously, I want to thank you all very much for taking the time to listen to this video. Bye.